So this is all the values that's stored in our database. Bam, and just like that, now you've set up your database for your web app. And Finance family, it's your other brother Adam Gitbags, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up your database for your web app. Let's get started. So if you saw the previous video, you know I showed you how to download Python and install VS Code. We're gonna to need to download and install Git Bash. So go ahead and type into Google Git Bash download. You can see here git-scm.com slash downloads, and then you can select your operating system here. And then I'm here on Windows. I'm just gonna go ahead and click the 64-bit, and then it's gonna download our file here. Let's go ahead and pop that open. So here we have the setup wizard. So let's go ahead and aggressively click through everything on the default settings and then that's gonna go ahead and install. So if we take a look at VS Code here, we can see if we open this drop down here by the plus sign that there's no git bash. So we wanna see bash over here. And now that that's all downloaded, we can complete the setup here and just click finish. We don't need to launch it. Awesome, so I'm just gonna close out VS Code. So I went ahead and I relaunched VS Code and I'm gonna check this drop down here and then we have git bash. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new terminal using git bash. And I'm gonna delete this PowerShell terminal right here and delete this Python terminal. And so now you can see here, we've got our bash terminal. And as you can see here, we're already in our vol app directory. So now that we're in our bash terminal, let's go ahead and type this command Python dash M V E N V V E N V. And then you can see it creates a folder called V E N V. And then to activate our virtual environment, we're going to type source V E N V slash scripts slash activate. And if you open up scripts here, you can see here is our file. You can see right here, we've activated our virtual environment named V E N V. And then I just looked for the folders and files inside of our full app folder. And we can see V E N V folder is right there. So we're in our current working directory. And now we We've activated our virtual environment. Next, we're going to want to create a file. Let's call it createdb.py. And this is obviously going to be a Python file here. What we're going to do is we're going to pull down some data from the Polygon API, and then we're going to create a database with that data. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we better create another file here. Let's call it requirements.txt. So to create a requirements.txt file, we're just listing out the packages that we want to install here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to run pip install dash r requirements.txt and see if that goes. And then you can see here it's installing our requirements.txt file to our virtual environment. So you know I probably didn't do that right, but you know it's our first web app video, so we're just going to send it. So I'm also going to make another file called polygon API key.py. And then here's where I'm going to put my API key. So I'm just going to save it to a variable called polygon API key. And if you want to check out how to get set up, I've got a whole playlist here where we can get you started with the API and shout out to the polygon team for bringing me on as an affiliate. You know, I got a 10% discount code in the description. So basically the file just looks like this. We're going to import this variable in our create db.py file. Now, if you've seen my other video on the volatility notification system, you'll see that this script is very familiar. We're gonna use the same base to grab our volatility data here. So first we're gonna import our modules, then we're gonna go ahead and read in our API key from the other file, or you can just go ahead and write it in here as a string. Next, this variable trim length, that's how many tickers we wanna include in our table on our web app. So we're just gonna include five tickers. Then here, we're just creating an empty data frame where we're gonna store our log return data. Next, we're connecting to the Polygon API by creating a client here and then passing in our API key. Now here, I have a list of stock tickers. If you've seen my stock ticker list, you can obviously make this list a lot larger, but we're gonna use six tickers, and then we're just gonna get the top five most volatile and use those in our web app. So here we've got a for loop, and it loops through all of our stock tickers above, and it does the following. So this line here, it goes to Polygon and grabs daily candlestick data. Then we're gonna format that data into a data frame. Next, we're gonna create a date column so we can easily identify our dates. And then we're gonna set our index to be our date. Next, we're gonna create log returns by looking at the close to close data. Then we're gonna create a rolling window here of 20 days. So 20 trading days is a month, so that's what we're working with. Next, we're gonna calculate a rolling window of our standard deviation. So this is a rolling standard deviation calculation here. If you've seen my volatility analysis videos, I'll link them up here. I cover a lot of different volatility metrics that you can use. 
Now here's our standard deviations data data frame. We're gonna create a column and that column is gonna be the ticker name. And then we're gonna use, damn, you could just hear the money coming in. That's why they call me Adam Kitbags. And so here in our standard devs data frame, we're creating a column and that's gonna have the standard deviation data going down the column. So here in this data frame, we're adding a column, which the column name is gonna be the ticker name. And then the values in the column are gonna be our standard deviation data. Then once we do that for every ticker, we're going to have a data frame here that's filled with the standard deviation data. Now there's going to be some NANs, so we're just going to trim that data down. And then here we're going to rename our index. So all of this stuff I've covered in the other videos. So here's where we're going to start changing the script a little bit to make our database. So I'm going to go ahead and run this code and then print out what our standard deviations data frame looks like. Oh dude, fuck. No wonder I'm not in the bash terminal. So you know I'm struggling. So I'm gonna go over here to view command palette and then open settings. And then here we have our user settings. Go ahead and add a new line here. Terminal dot integrated default profile. Can you believe this? Default profile and let's do dot windows, right? And then here we'll add git bash. And of course we wanna add a comma there. So here I'm in user settings.json and then we have terminal.integrated.default profile windows here since we're on windows. And then I've added git bash here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, close that out. Okay, so I closed out that other PowerShell terminal here. So I went ahead, I closed this out and then I'll go ahead and run this. And then you can see here now it's using bash as our default, but it's still not picking up our modules. Seeing as I had no idea what's going on with the requirements.txt file, I'm just gonna go ahead and pip install all the packages we need here. And then let's go ahead and see if the code finally runs. I mean, this config was pretty troublesome, but you know what? That's why they pay me the big bucks. But you can see now here that we've got our data frame right here. Our index is called index. It has, you know, date times here. And then we have our columns with all of our standard deviation data. And there's no NANs here. So let's continue on with the formatting. So I'm just gonna move these quotes down here. We're gonna transpose the last row of this data into a data frame, and then we're gonna reset the index and just see how that looks. But we're gonna to wanna to take a look at our sorted data to see what that looks like. So we can see here, we've taken the last row and then transposed it. So it's a column instead of a row now. And then we've reset our index. So here in our index, it goes from zero to five. And then we can see, we just wanna change out our column names here. So that's what we're gonna do in this next line. So you can see here, we're just gonna rename that first column to tickers and then our second column to standard deviations. And then we're gonna sort by value. So you can see here, we've got our index and then we've got our tickers and then we've got our standard deviations here and that is sorted by value. And then next, all we're gonna do here is we're gonna trim to our length of five and then we're gonna print out our data frame here, highest vol, which is just gonna have the top five volatility stocks here. And you can see instead of having six, now we have five right here. Great, so this data frame is gonna be the basis for our database. Now, if you've seen my SQL Alchemy video, I show the basics on how to get set up. So I'll link that right here. And then let's continue to run through the code here. So these two lines here are just confirming that we've got SQL Alchemy installed. And then I'm just getting our current working directory in Python just to be certain of where we're gonna create our database object. So next we're gonna create this variable here. So next we're gonna use create engine to create a SQLite database. And that's gonna be called volapp.db. And when we run this code, you're gonna see the database populate here in our workspace. So all we're doing here is we're creating a table. We're gonna use our highest vol data frame. We're gonna use the two SQL method to create a table called vol table. And we're gonna use this engine object to do that, which is linked to our vol app.db. And then once we've created our table, we're gonna go ahead and query the table by fetching the rows. And then we're just gonna use this SQL query here, select star from vol table. And then we're gonna iterate through the results here. We're just gonna print out a string that has the word index ticker and vol data. And that's gonna have the values from our data frame, which are here. So let's go ahead and run this. We're gonna create our database for our web app.
and you can see here's our version of SQL Alchemy, here's our current working directory, and then you can see we have a create table command that's associated with this to SQL method, and then you can see it inserts into our table all of our index tickers and standard deviations, and then you can see the values here. And then here you see our queries getting printed to the terminal here. So this is all the values that's stored in our database. Bam, and just like that, now you've set up your database for your web app and you're ready to get started coding on your front end and your back end. Shout out to the Polygon team. If you wanna get 10% off your data, go ahead, click the link in the description and I got the discount code there for you as well. Until then, fam, you have my blessing. Let's go get these bags.